are growing. It means we are still all pretty locked down in the, in the apartments, but uh, there are some good news. I can see already what's happening around the world and uh, there are some positive news uh, coming up uh, already in Europe. Some of the countries started to ease down a little bit on the elite athletes, especially in sailing, because we are an outdoor sport and uh, we are the low risk, uh, we are the low risk uh, facility. So I think uh, people are, uh, one second, people are looking to sailing as a, as a, a safe sport. So I can see that uh, some of the clubs in Croatia, Slovenia, uh, Poland, they started to open up mostly for the uh, national team members or elite uh, athletes. But uh, that's already some positive movement and hopefully we are all going to be soon on the water and uh, hopefully we can continue doing our job. We can continue uh, sailing and thinking about the next season because this season looks uh, a little bit upside down. So we have a lot of time to improve some of the things we never had time because uh, we only think about competition, but uh, we can come back to basics and uh, work on the basics uh, this summer. Yeah. So today we are going to be talking about the downwind topic and um, we are going to talk mostly about the downwind techniques and uh, things are, one second, I have to, uh, more things related to actually how to drive the boat um, fast in different uh, conditions, in the wavy conditions, in non-wavy conditions, because that's an essential uh, course for us. And um, a lot of people are struggling to sail downwinds and they are um, always coming to me and questioning like how to sail downwind, why, why I'm not moving as fast as uh, on the upwinds. I gain a lot on the upwinds, but then lose a lot on the downwinds. So this is an essential course, which is good to discuss but it also uh, requires a lot of practice with it yeah so moving ahead this is gonna be uh, the plan of the day what we are gonna be talking about i'll explain you a little bit of uh, sorry a bit of theory so how the things work, so, uh, where we should position ourselves, the conditions uh, of the day, the wind condition, the wake condition. So we have to uh, keep it in our mind. The different examples of techniques, I'll show you a couple of examples of uh, light, uh, medium and strong wind of different sailors of different classes also, because we are, uh, having three classes in one boat and there are small differences in each one of them and the actual uh, downwind in the waves yeah so that would be all right guys please let's mute the mics for today and uh, we are moving forward to the uh, uh, main subject so what I'm gonna mention first is we always have to ask ourselves what is actually driving our boat on the downwind yeah and i'll just give you a reminder and the main power which is driving our boat is actually the wind yeah because that's where the people are uh, making a lot of mistakes not understanding what is uh, actually driving our boat downwind so we always need to think about the prime engine for our downwind course is the how much power we have in the sail. And that's we are gonna develop in the whole subject. But at the minute, I'm just reminding you what's our prime uh, energy, which is driving us on the downwind course, yeah? What we have, which is working against us is the actual friction and the friction is Hull, yeah, which is a uh, position in the water, and that's uh, one of the main uh, friction we have. And plus, we have a rudder and center board, yeah, those two uh, things in the boat they're um, creating a lot of friction. So, we have to think how to uh, reduce it or how to 
minimize the effect of friction on the downwind courses because that it's as an essential part as well for uh, going fast on the downwind course. Yeah, and the extra energy which we can add to our downwind course is actually weight. The weight is an additional energy which is not constant as a, a wind power, but it has a big effect if we uh, if we work well with the waves, because that's a, a, a quite an important part, and that's where people doing the most gains is the people who are able to uh, catch the waves, surf them down, link them to the next waves, and keep on going downhill. Um, while sailing on the bumpy road because basically what is happening on the wavy conditions we have a bumpy road which is can be uh, an easy route when you can always go downhill with the waves or it can be a difficult route where you're always climbing the waves and the boat just have more resistance in the water and it becomes a difficult task and then that's why we we have a much slower speed on the uh, downwind. So those are the essentials which we have to keep in our mind all the time. And then, according to the uh, according to the conditions, we can already work out uh, what's the best way to sail the downwind course. Yeah. So if we start uh, with the with the uh, first element. Uh, which is driving our boat downwind, that's actually uh, our sail. And that's a good uh, screenshot from the um, simulation, which I just took uh, from, the, uh, from the YouTube. That's a simulation of the free pumping of the downwind for the thin class, which is not similar to our downwinds, but the simulation shows us the effect of just sailing downwind, then uh, the the rocking uh, with the with the sail or with the boat and then we have a pumping free pumping and then roll and pump so there are four uh, motions in the boat for fin which is all allowed and it's all really uh, well explained and shown with the turbulences and all the effects which is affecting our sail but it's not crucial for us for us is the most crucial when the boat is going static downwind yeah so that's the base for the laser. And as you can see, there is a flow of the air going around the sail. And we have two parts, is the leech part and we have the mass part. So as you can see, the flow around the leech part is going a little bit more smoother than around the mass. So that's the first part what we need to think about that the sail on the downwind course on the laser has two sides. Yeah, so we have a leech part and the mass part. So that's a very important information to keep in our heads because we need to understand that the wind, when it's pushing just an object, an even object in one direction, is not traveling as fast as the wind which is crossing the object. So what it means that the air flow creates more lift when it's uh, having a little bit of cross angle along the sail rather than just pushing directly into the sail. So that means a lot for the sailors that we cannot sail the dead downwind when, when the wind is flowing around both sides of the edges of the sail. We always have to create a little bit of cross, cross flow around the sail. And the easiest way or the easiest to feel the more pressure on the sail is actually to slightly bear away and get a leech powered up first. So when we get the leech powered up first, you will suddenly feel a little bit of more lift and a little bit of more power. So that means that we cannot sail that downwind on the single-handed boats. The airflow is not going uh, across it's just going directly into the sail and we don't have a nice flow and we don't have uh, more lift than slightly angled away from the dead downwind direction 
that you can test yourself by just pulling a little bit of main sheet and bearing away and you will feel that the suddenly there is a little bit more power in the main sheet and the boat starts to have more drive forward and that's one of the uh, good way to test it and then see how it feels by just tightening and easing main sheet just to feel it we are not allowed to do it but we can feel it and then from that uh, um, simulation you can also uh, have a look at the efficiency or the amount of uh, power which is uh, pushing the sail on the downwinds in the simulation it's well shown that when the boat is just going static downwind there is certain amount of forces on the sail when you add some motion or we call it rocking the sail power is increasing by 35 percent and when you add a pumping plus rocking uh, as it's called in fin uh, free pumping we are tripling the power on the sail which that means a lot that's a lot of power we are generating by motion in the boat yeah we are not allowed to do this in the laser and i'm not encouraging you to uh, learn how to pump but what we are al allowed to do in the laser it's actually to roll the boat to windward and leeward just to facilitate uh, the steering of the boat which is legal we are allowed to roll to facilitate the steering yeah but if we are doing it continuously then it's uh, falling under rule 42.2 where it's uh, a continuous movement and you are falling uh, under the penalty so rolling to facilitate and then to get an extra power into the sail it's allowed so we need to keep it in mind and uh, think about it so first step is the sail yes moving to the next slide after the sail we have the boat which is connecting the sailor and the 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 sail so the boat has friction so everyone knows on the light winds that we have to reduce friction in the boat so that's a, one of the easiest thing to uh, do in the light wind is to heal the boat to the windward side as much as possible by using the body balance and by using the uh, movements of bringing the boat towards you you can also hold the center board there are different ways but as least boat surface you have in the water the less friction you have it it's only possible to do it in the light airs once we are reaching certain uh, level of wind which is above eight ten knots we cannot keep the boat to the windward hill anymore so much because we have a lot of power on the sail and that's what is happening it's stabilizing our boat and we are also have to balance a bit more so if you remember from the one of the first uh, presentations when we had uh, about the center of the boat so i was mentioning is where is the center of the laser and it's beside the ratchet block as you can see on the um, yellow picture where is the baby sitting that's meant to be a sailor but we are all babies so i will call it just a sailor as a baby so we can see that there is a lot of forces which are um, pushing the sail towards the bow yes we have the mast which is going forward towards the bow so that's two main forces which are uh, pushing the boat forward but at the same time uh, getting the boat very unstable so here the sailor is balancing with the aft and forward and out out movements not so much as on the upwind hiking out it's more aft and slightly out and as you can see the baby is sitting quite central so it means we are working from the central position with a smoother body balancing so that's quite an important part that to understand is balancing the sail power because a lot of people are sailing and they're balancing the boat and they don't understand what they're balancing so the sailor is balancing the power of the sail so first we need to 
find the power in the sail and then we need to find the resistance between the sailor and the sail. Those are the critical parts and we are not balancing the boat. We are balancing the powers of the sail. We are moving to the next thing, which uh, is in the boat, is the dagger board. Yeah, the dagger board is an, an important piece of the equipment, which can help us and it also doesn't help us so much on the downwind. So in the lighter air, we try to um, reduce the drag created by the center board. So we try to lift the center board as high as possible and um, keep it up while on the heavier breeze to have a steadier boat, we always keep the center board a little bit lower than on the uh, lighter winds because the center board, it creates a side uh, balancing, which is a side resistance, which is helping us to uh, keep the boat a little bit steadier. If you lift the center board in the strong wind completely and you just work with the sail, the boat is gonna be completely uh, unsteady and very hard to manage. So keep it in mind that um, in the heavier breeze, we keep it a little bit lower. As you can see here on the picture, the center board is just 15 centimeters up. It's more than enough for the heavier breeze and a very back uh, positioning of the sailor. So the last thing is using the body weight for uh, steering in the boat. So we all know that when we heel the boat to the leeward side, of the boat when you are moving forward, the boat will start pointing into the wind. When we hear the boat to the windward side, the boat will start to bear away. But we are adding an extra force, which is, you can see on the yellow uh, boat picture, that the sail is pushed by the wind and it's already creating some side power, which is heading us up automatically. So there is already a little bit of power which is heading us up. So first we are using the body to balance those two forces and then we can add an extra uh, body weight on both sides to create extra heel to steer with the boat. And that's an important part to uh, use our body to uh, steer with the boat because a lot of people are just using the rudder and they're creating a lot of drag and we don't want to use it so much. We want to use the body to the body balance to steer with the laser on the downwind. So if you look at the last picture where you have the green area and if you are putting the weight on the green area, the boat just follows the green arrow. If you are putting the weight to the blue area, you are heading the boat into the blue arrow. So those things are uh, quite uh, simple, but it's very hard to uh, do it on the water because people are just not having enough balancing and they just don't feel how much they need to put weight and where they need to position themselves to, to actually affect the boat. So that's all looking well on the pictures, but in reality, I don't know why, but people do not find it easy to find how much body needs to be moving around. So we are moving to the next slide. And that's gonna be uh, the subject of the last uh, time on the upwind, where we have to keep in our mind what sort of conditions of the day we have, yeah? So when we have the light wind, we know that uh, we are doing one sort of technique. When we have medium wind, we are using another sort of technique. Then when we have the waves, we are implementing other parts of uh, our body movements and also the wind origin. So if it's a sea breeze, the wind is very steady. If it's offshore breeze, the wind is very shifty. So we always keep in mind those three uh, things day and then we just choose which exactly are happening today. So let's say we are going out on water today and we see uh, offshore breeze, 8 to 12 knots, so we can implement 
a certain and flood water yeah so we can implement sort of technique just following the wind pattern and not focusing so much on the uh, steering with the bow boat by balancing yeah so that's one of the uh, techniques we are going to be using so then we have big waves heavy wind what technique we are going to use is basically uh, going straight downwind and steering between the waves that's going to be shown in the next uh, slides but you have to create certain uh, strategy of the downwind before you you go there and usually that's what we do before the races we have time and we always sail upwind and we do some practice and then we just try the downwind we do a little bit of extreme angles to understand what's the pattern of the day and then we do, uh, we use a certain technique so here i just um, mentioned a couple of uh, things which which you need to have in in your head for each uh, wind strength for, so it's zero to eight knots eight to twelve knots what we need to focus on so that's something you can read and it's it's uh, gonna be in your head but always the best way is just to uh, give it a try yourself and think about what is the best way for uh, your own technique because i i found a lot of people which are very specific how to say it correct and uh, thinking always about okay this is the wind of the day today we have eight knots i'm only allowed to play with the main sheet yes this is one of the way of developing the techniques and it's one of the way of putting the things by shells yeah but when we are racing the goal is just to sail fast yeah and we are not focusing so much on how much uh, weight we are positioning on the leeward side, how much on the windward side, how much main sheet trimming. So this all testing is going in the practice. And the practice is very important. And I, I think uh, soon we are all gonna be on the water and hopefully everyone will have a chance to get back and get the feeling of the main sheet, how much power we have in the boat and how to steer on the waves. So moving to the next, slide it's one of the um, important part of the downwind where people are always coming to me after the race and they're blaming is like oh i had a, such a bad uh, downwind in today's condition why i was very slow and this is happening a lot in the offshore breeze when we have flat water and a lot of people are trying to catch some invisible waves which are not existing they're doing some maximal uh, motion of, uh, with the rig and they're trying to get something extra out of the boat and forgetting about the essentials yeah an offshore breeze oops sorry it's all coming up with the small steps so in offshore breeze, it's actually very important to follow the wind pattern because the, the wind is coming in the, in the gusts and in some places we have more pressure, in some places we have less pressure and we have no extra energy in the water because the water is usually flat and we are always racing close to the shore. So we don't have so much waves on the offshore breeze. So that's why I'm always uh, putting this situation as a standard one because there is not enough time to build up this sort of small chop of 40 centimeters to start surfing. So usually we're sailing more or less in the flat water when it's offshore. So in that case, the priority is the wind power. Yeah, in the wind power pri priority, we have to follow the gas and where is the next wind because it's a really big difference of the speeds when you are in the gust which is plus five or eight knots comparing to a person who is without a, any wind and he is moving really slow even in the best way of sailing but a lot of people do not that's why i put a little diagram here on the right to show the actual uh, area where the um, gusts are approaching from and as you can see in the yellow boat example 
I, I draw a two arrows, which, are, which is the area of interest for the sailor. It's behind your transom. That's where a lot of people are not looking because they are scared to see other boats or they um, focus so much on catching the waves on the main ship work on other stuff, but they do not look so often behind their transom. And this is your most important area to follow where is the next gas coming from. As you can see, the yellow boat is parallel to a gust where the blue boat is having another uh, wind. So that's another uh, thing which people are usually looking forward towards the mast. And when they see on the side a, a gust, they think, uh huh, there is more wind on the other side. So let me just jump over there. So they travel towards this wind. And by the time they reach the pl place of the blue boat, the wind is already gone because the wind is also traveling forward. And by the time you cross the distance towards the uh, blue boat, the wind already will vanish. So that's one of the things. Do not jump from one gust from one side to another side. Always look back and try to find what is happening and what is coming from the back. And if you can see something approaching from the back, but you need to slightly uh, go across, at least you have time. You're traveling across and the gust is traveling down. So by the time both of you traveling, the gust and, and, and you, you will meet in the one uh, point. So that's an important part. You cannot jump from yellow to blue position within a second. And the wind by that second already traveled down 10 meters, let's say. So there is no chance you're gonna get this one. So you have to be patient and look for the next gust from the back, which is gonna happen for you as well. And that's probably one of the key uh, for the success on the uh, offshore breeze is actually to link those pressures, to have a really good observations and always follow the pattern. That's where you can do the most gains and you don't need to have a fantastic technique of sailing downwind fast. So this is one of the principles where we are working with the wind first, yes? And then we add everything extra, which is helping us to go even faster. So talking about the body position, so we are taking the light wind as a uh, initial uh, position. So we are always uh, sitting quite uh, far forward, close to the center board with the bomb sitting on the windward deck. And that's very important where you position your bomb because depending where is your bomb, uh, that depends how much you have to shift with the upper body. But as you can see now in the light wind, the person is sitting on the windward side with almost centered. The, the wind is very, very light and the boat is already here to the windward side. So at the minute we have so much uh, little, so little power in the sail that any weight on the windward side, it's already stronger than the uh, sail power. The stronger wind gets, the force just starts to even up. So we have more power on the leeward side and less power on the windward side by body position. So the more out we go, the more we are getting balance. But the initial position is central. And from here, we start to uh, develop the next steps. Very important for um, keeping the balancing of the boat is to be able to uh, be hooked with the uh, hiking strap. You can see here with the yellow circle is uh, highlighted that um, the back leg is hooked with the, uh, with the hiking strap reverse so that when the person is leaning out with the upper body to balance the, the weight of the sail, he's holding to something. He's not holding to the hands, to the main sheet or uh, to the tiller extension. He's locked with the lower part and just working with the upper body in and out. So that's the first step to create the windward heel, extra windward heel, extra windward hiking strap, yeah? And the main sheet, is a, it's an important uh, unit on the downwinds. 
because that's where you are trimming your sail. And to always have a good feeling on the downwinds, you always need to test where you feel it better. Some people are sailing from the um, main ship close to the boom because they eliminate the factor of the ratchet block and it gives you a little bit of a better feeling on the really, really light winds. While above eight, 10 knots, we need to start to have a better uh, linking with the ratchet block, then we switch down to the ratchet block. But for the really light breeze, we can use the upper part of the main sheet to remove the element of the ratchet completely. And then we have less friction in the main sheet, you have better feeling, and that helps a lot. For the lighter breeze, we are also using the thinner main sheet because I saw a lot of 4.7 kids uh, coming to the light wind venue with seven, eight millimeter main sheet and it's so heavy. They're just trying to trim something and the boom just collapses on top of them because the main sheet itself already heavier than the power of the sail. So think about having two sets of the main sheet for the strong wind and the light wind because it's uh, quite important to have a best feel, feeling in the different conditions and I know it's very hard for the hands on the strong wind, so people prefer to sail with the thicker main sheet. But once it gets light, try to shift to the thinner main sheet. So th those are the crucial part about the body positioning. And from here, we can start creating the motions. So as you can see, the uh, extension at the minute is not uh, in any steering position, but Number one thing is while balancing, do not forget that you are holding the tiller extension and the tiller extension is an extension of the rudder underwater. And a lot of people are moving together with the tiller extension, keeping it locked. They are moving together and affecting the rudder at the back. So number one, learn how to balance without affecting the movement of tiller, tiller extension. So try to disconnect your steering hand and move in your boat without moving your fist. So you are kind of disconnecting the hand, the, the, the body from the uh, steering hand. So you want to do all these movements independently while the steering hand is always in the same position because it's one of the key points where the even the good sailors, they, they just don't see it because they are so busy with balancing that they don't realize that they're moving together with the rudder. And that's where they're doing the most uh, mistakes, where they're steering a lot. The rudder is affecting the flow of the water and it creates a lot of drag. But the thing is, by simple thing, by disconnecting your hand, and that's people know how to do it, just as a reminder, it makes a huge difference that you balance and you do not move your hand. So going into the examples, I always hey, choose Alex, the example. Yeah. There are some uh, questions from uh, participants. I'll uh, say the questions. Yeah. Uh, first question from Matthew Flores. How much should yeah. you heal the boat to windward in light wind? Machi, I think you were attending the, the uh, lesson uh, when we were talking about the roles itself for the tucking and jibing. And you can see that uh, we were always uh, using the extreme. So until the boom is touching the water or when you roll to the windward, you try to roll it as much as possible as almost the boom is pointing into the sky. So this is the extremes we are trying, yeah? But you always find the best balance where we are doing somewhere in between. When you want to point up and you want to have some leeward here, we are using maybe halfway down the end of the boom until almost touching the water and then this is the range of the moves, yeah? When we're going straight downwind on the light winds, we just try to keep the windward heel 
as much as possible. And I know the 4.7s are struggling a lot. So they're starting to actually hold the center board and try to bring all the weight out and bringing the us very far out. And at the same time, they start to uh, dive with the, their bottom of the us into the water and create an extra drop in the water. So you need to create the maximum windward heel without touching the water with your body. So that's probably your uh, ultimate goal. The second question is by Christian. Is it recommended to ease the sail a little bit more than 90 degrees in light winds? So there is no uh, a clear answer how much main sheet you open to go uh, fast or slow. But uh, we can always first try to find the course which is not that downwind. So this is the most important uh, part, is first to find a non-dead downwind position, so which is going straight downwind. So we always try to find first the angle of 5, 10, 15 degrees away from that angle. Then we are just trimming the sail according to the, each angle we are choosing. If we are bearing away by 15 degrees by the lee and it feels fast, and it feels a lot of power. So we are just trimming the sail. You can ease it and pull back until you have a nice resistance in the sail. So in some cases, we do open the uh, main sheet more than 90 degrees. In the stronger wind, we do not open 90 degrees ever because we have already a new element as a flex of the mast and we have to compromise with the entire sail power to uh, to keep the boat steady. So there is no more 90 degrees rule. So the 90 degrees is something people advise, but we always try to adjust according to the power on the sail. And one of the uh, example I give to kids probably better, think is, uh, uh, about your main sheet as a fishing line. So you always want to try to catch some fish on the line. Yeah, so once you get the fish, and that's what we call the power in the sail. Try to hold it as long as possible. Once you lose it, you release the main sheet a bit and again try to look for new fish or new power in the sail. So that's one of the small kiddie example of what is the power in the sail. It's not exactly 90 degrees with the boom. It can vary a lot according to your angle of the boat. And the easiest way to find the power is to bear away and get the leech powered first. So that's probably going to be the answer, which is not crystal clear, but you cannot set a rule that 90 degrees, this is the correct one, and you go fast. We always have to trim the sail and find the maximum resistance in the main ship. The next question. Is it good if the gunwale is dipping in the water while heeling to windward? Yeah, that's, that's still a good way. Um, the gunwale is not a problem. The problem is what I mentioned before is uh, dipping with your bum into the water. So that's, that's already like too much of the heel because you are forcing it and then the body starts to be in the water and creates an extra drag. When the gunwale is in the water, it's still... Uh, good because you don't have any extra friction underwater you still going uh, downwind and you lift more surface underwater which is in the uh, on the bottom of the surface of the heart so if it's touching the gunwale it's not a problem just to keep it in the same position that's where the balancing is um, becoming crucial to keep the boat in the same position with the once you reach the gunner touching the water and not being able to and uh, not to uh, move too much with the rig in the light wind that's where the art of balancing is coming to the uh, to the case next question what condition is the best to be sailing by the lee so uh, to sail by the lee i think uh, all the conditions are good sail in the slightly big angles on the lighter breeze and the easiest way to feel extra 
pressure is going by the lead because we are turning the sail into a position where we start to uh, create a cross flow of the air through the sail from the leech towards the mast. And the, the more you bear away, the more power you will feel. Yeah, but there is a limit of how, the more you will bear away, you will end up going reach. It's really fast, yes, but you are not going to the downwind mark. So we need to compromise with the uh, best angle and the best power. So slightly bearing away until you get extra speed, use it and then compromise it with the course towards the uh, downwind destination. Because that's also another part where people start to learn the technique. They discover that the boat is going really fast in the wide angles and they just carry on sailing with these wide angles because they feel it's fast. But we also travel extra distance. So we have to compromise with these two uh, things by going really wide one or really narrow one. So this is the way to develop it is going to be at the end and I will uh, just uh, mention the pattern of what we will focus on. So that's a little bit closer to the end. So now that's we are moving question. to the examples. I choose the examples of lighter, windier and uh, windy stuff, but always in the wave condition. So we always have a little bit of wave power. And the focus here is to roll the boat to create extra power and at the same time to catch the waves. As you can see, there is a lot of motion here going with the rig, but at the same time, a lot of angle changing. So for each angle change, we are trimming the sail. Yeah. Once we get the wave, we are always aiming to point with the hull in the wave direction. So that's one of the most important parts where we try to create extra power in the sail and then link it with the wave. So as you can see in the last, sorry. So, uh, Need to move this one down. So, as you can see here, we created an extra power of the sail to catch the waves. And once the wave power started to work, the first goal is to uh, re to keep the boat flat. And once the boat is flat, you will use the wave power a little bit longer than uh, usually because the wave power wants to have more surface in the water. So we generate the power by the sail to catch the waves and one of the ways of generating the power is roll the boat to the windward side in one movement by using the upper body and healing the boat to the windward side and at the same time to stop the motion in, in uh, maximum windward heel for the both. So that's the first thing where we have to learn is to learn how to roll the boat and change the course because when we are rolling the boat to the windward side, we are aiming to bear away. And by bearing away and powering the sail with your uh, main sheet, that's where you get the first, uh, by the lee, uh, small acceleration pump. So you are trying to bring the end of the boom from the far down towards all the way up. At the same time, trim the main sheet and change the course. That's called roll, which is uh, helping you to steer with the boat. And as you can see, when you get the acceleration, the sail becomes completely uh, under power. It's almost flopping because now we are just using the wave power. And this is one of the, um, first motion we need to learn is how to rock the boat in the controlled way. It's not a continuous, it's just one movement from bringing the end of the boom from the very bottom till the very top. And it's just one movement without dropping the... The first motion what people have to learn 
and what they have to uh, improve to get an extra power from the sail by creating the motion with the roll to the windward side. So we are moving to the 4.7 example. And why I'm going to mention the 4.7? Because the 4.7s, they don't have so much sail power to have time to change the course and to affect the ball. So most of the 4.7s, they sail more or less straight courses down. They do not change the courses so much because they have a limited uh, sail area and it's not as efficient as a standard or the radio. So most of the 4.7s, they're sailing straight down with a small angle change. And you can see here uh, the body work which is required to balance the boat and to create the extra power in the sail to catch the waves. So here is quite a good example of bringing the boat down, trying to control it. It's very difficult for the 4.7s to control it. And then to try to steer down with the waves. Again, he's trying to create an extra power by upper body and steer down with the waves. You can see here we have very uh, little angle changing because there is no time in this sort of wave uh, conditions. So he will be able to go only in the straight and just do a small pump with a small adjustment of the force. And that's the only way for the 4.7 in this sort of medium uh, light wind or medium wind to be able to get the sail power and the wind power. So as you can see here, for balancing the boat, he's using the upper body quite a lot, going from windward side to the leeward side. And this is quite an important movement to affect the leeward side. We actually have to shift all our uh, upper body weight to the leeward side. And sometimes we need even to lift our bum from the deck. Then we actually start to affect uh, the leeward side when we're transferring the whole body weight on the leeward side and that's one of the main uh, thing where people are making the mistakes they're just balancing with the head and what is happening they think all the weight is here so if i bring the head towards the leeward side it affects the sail it does not affect the sail you need to use the whole body to affect uh, the balancing of the boat. So it's a good example. And here he was standing up quite a lot uh, to shift all his weight to the leeward side to create this leeward hill, which is helping the boat to point up a little bit. Then he creates a windward roll, pulls the main sheet to create an extra tension in the leech and bears away and it gives him extra uh, power in the sail, which was enough to catch the waves. So this is one of the good examples. Uh, this guy uh, finished, uh, I think, third at the World Championship in 2019. So he was uh, pretty quick. And it's not a bad example. In the radio, we can uh, talk about same principles as in the standard, but uh, the 4.7 have a little bit of uh, differences. So the radio and standards, they have more or less the same concept. And here we are talking about medium to strong winds, where we are um, working a lot with the main sheet. And as you can see here, sorry. As you can see here, uh, there are a lot of uh, course changes, and that's probably the only uh, solution for avoiding the steep parts of the waves and, and try to steer in between the lower part of the waves. And it requires a lot of course changing. While the course is changing, we're trimming the sail uh, non-stop. So as you can see, to keep the balance in the boat and plus keeping the power in the sail, it's all about the main sheet work. And there is no more 90 degrees because we can turn from 
degrees from the dead down to 30 degrees uh, by the lake. So it's uh, almost a 60 degrees changes of the course. So we always have to uh, trim the sail in the extreme waves. So one of the things which we can uh, look here at is the body positioning and the helming position and, and the way the person is keeping the uh, tiller extension. It's, it's a little bit above the medium wind. It's, I think it's already 18 touching 20. So for us in Malta, it's a medium wind, but in general, it's uh, becoming like quite a windy uh, condition. So as you can see, to keep the boat more balanced, the body position is moving aft a lot. And also for holding the tiller extension at the joint, it gives you more grip and more control over the rudder because in that windier stuff, we are actually looking into being in the control of the rudder because with the more speed we get, we have uh, more movements in the rudder and we have to become a little bit uh, stiffer and a little bit like tougher with our steering so and even more aggressive we call it so to be able to be in total control sometimes people are shifting to the uh, joint and just having a total control of, of where the boat goes because if you have a soft hand in this medium heavy winds uh, condition if you let the main uh, if you let the tiller extension go, the boat immediately will change the course. That's how fast it affects uh, the rudder, the speed, yeah? So we really want to have a heavy grip on the rudder and to be able to control the courses and to be able to steer where we want to steer, not where the, want, where the boat wants, because we have all the power in the sail, we have all the um, wave power, and it's all about steering hard into low uh, parts of the wave. Moving to the next slide, I'm gonna uh, mention the heavy breeze. And in the heavy breeze, we are sailing almost dead downwind because we, we just want to reach to the downwind mark as fast as possible. And just trying to help the ball go up the wave to have less friction and then as soon as we start surfing we just steer down to the drop of the wave and a little bit less changing of the course here we had a, a rip so the person had to avoid yeah but to have the most controlled sailing on the strong wind with the waves is the easiest way is to sail dead downwind because that's where the boat is becoming like less powered and once the boat is moving you just have enough speed to uh, go from one wave to another wave and so on so it's not about the angle change it changes it's all about having this maximum power which is driving you dead down so if to summarize all these three um, videos so in each uh, wind strength we are reducing the angles. So we start in the light breeze, we start with really wide angles and keep it in the same direction until uh, it gets windier and windier. And in the windy stuff, we try to go dead down as fast as possible. And sometimes we are changing the course just to get an easier pathway for the bow to go around the waves. So those are the examples which are good to study. These um, uh, videos are gonna be published together with the uh, whole presentation on the website of uh, ILCA and on the Sail Coach website. So you can find them and uh, look them again through this stuff. But now we are moving forward and we are trying to think about how to develop those techniques because a lot of people they are coming and say I know I'm slow I know I want to improve but where do I start from so I, I when I try to develop this uh, sort of downwind technique and people really want to understand 
to two, three parts. So one part is understanding the sale power, and that's where you are working on main sheet filling, how much pressure you have, how much uh, power you get with each changing of the course. And the easiest way to understand this is to experiment with the extreme angle. So you bear away by the lead until you feel the boat goes faster and faster and faster. Yes? Then you start to point up, the boat slows down, slows down, slows down. So we are experimenting and then analyzing. Okay, this is the way to speed up the boat by turning by the lead. So that's the first step. And this is all by practice done. And uh, the more we do it, it's a little bit easier to understand. But if you break it in three parts and you just put them in one session, the main goal is just to understand the sail power, eliminating the boat balance and eliminating the um, wave power. This is gonna be a really easy way to develop the whole technique and put it together in one piece. So here I gave you some tips on what you need to focus. And by trimming the main sheet and changing the course, you will feel the difference. Yeah. So negative angle is the fastest angle, which is same as by the lead. We call it negative or going by the lead. Is the fastest and easiest way to understand the extra power in the sail. Yeah. Once you get the good feel of the sail power, you start to use your body to help to steer the boat, and then we start to focus on boat balancing. But by Developing the boat balancing, you already keep the sail power as a side power. So you start to trim the sail with your side vision, but now more focusing on the balancing the boat. Yes. So here we start to experiment again. How much leeward heel I can get and where do I need to put my weight to get the maximum leeward heel. Then we go to the windward heel. How much maximum windward heel can we reach. And it's also uh, hard to do it all in one go because every day we have different conditions. So we have to test these techniques in the light wind, in the medium, in the heavy breeze. Yeah? So once we are getting these two elements as knowing where we put the boat ba balance, where we put the body weight, and how we trim the main sheet to maximize the sail power. We start to think about when to change the course to catch the waves. And this is already becoming a full art because a lot of people, they can focus only on sail power, on boat balance, and then only on wave power, but forgetting about sail power. So we need to develop from first to third one. And when the sail power is continuously in the good field, then the wave power is gonna be easy to understand because you always look at the waves and you say, yes, I want to get this wave, but I need to have extra speed. And for that, I need to trim the main sheet. And that's gonna be already an, a developed skill. So here is the pathway, how to develop your uh, good downwind technique and what you need to focus on. And the ultimate goal is actually to be able to catch all the waves you want to get and maintain this surfing as long as possible because this is the most fun part of our uh, laser sailing and this is the best feeling as well because it's really fast it's really exciting there are, uh, the things are changing all the time on the water surface so you're always engaged on looking how to get this wave, next wave, and then get all the way down. And then you realize like by getting a really good set of waves and never uh, stopping your boat into the um, uphill, you feel that you're gaining like hundreds of meters towards the fleet. So that's why it's a very important uh, part of our sport. And to develop it, you really need to have nice facilities or really uh, think about how to um, train those stuff. In some places in the world, like uh, Garda Lake, everyone knows about 
uh, downwind and then it turns 180 degrees and you can come back uh, to the club in Arco or in uh, Torboli and you spend six hours of um, downwind practice. That's one of the way, but what I found in, in Garda Lake that you have really nice uh, conditions to practice the downwind. You get a lot of um, hours of practice, but the only thing is missing there is the actual surfing wave, which you can um, really work your way down and uh, develop some extra feeling. So the sea waves are always more easier to uh, understand and it's a little bit uh, faster to develop a really nice and uh, good downwind technique. What is good in Garda or the lakes where you have two winds that you can put enormous amount of hours and you can really get a really good feeling of the trimming of the main sheet and that's where we are talking about the first step of developing a good downwind technique. And I know from all the guys who sailed a lot in Garda, they, they automatically became um, good sailors. But you always need to add sea waves to have the best feeling and the best speed on the down. So as you can see, I just draw a little uh, map. Hey, Alex, Is, we have some yeah. questions. Yes. Um, first question. In the strong wind, should you use your body weight or the rudder to steer the boat more? So in the strong wind, uh, uh, what is strong for you and what is strong for uh, some other sailors it's also a big uh, uh, topic but in the strong wind we want to keep the boat as flat as possible and that's the ultimate goal so the, the body is really focused on keeping the boat flat and you just add the you just manipulate with your body to keep the boat flat and steering is uh, becoming more important because uh, that's where you can control the courses. So in the heavy breeze, in the like really strong wind, we can start steering a bit harder. And if you start surfing down the waves, we we do not think anymore about the water fri fri friction because once you start to surf downhill, it's becoming like riding the bicycle down the hill. You have the gravity which is helping us to go down and the water is the element which is pushing us down. So we start to use it. So when you are surfing down, we can use the rudder as much as possible just to keep the course always pointing with the bow down into the drops of the waves. As you can see here on the picture, I just draw a, a little diagram where the bow should point and where the stern is pointing according to the top of the wave. That's a really simple example. And you can see here how the boat, once it get, gets the surf wave, which is coming from the back, 90 degrees. And once you surf down, where you point next? And the bow is always pointing into the drops. And as once you are keeping this speed, you are already looking for the next draw, and that's how we are linking from one wave to another wave. Let me see some other questions. Okay. In the heavy wind, how to avoid bow plowing in water? We have, if we have less weight. So. I don't know, I understand about plowing. It's uh, the, the bow and diving. The bow digs, yeah? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So one of the ways is like to shift your weight uh, as far as possible back. Yeah. And that's uh, the first thing. And uh, quite often it happens that the boat gets such a high speed and you see that the bow is going to drop into, into the wave drop. And the next thing is happening is the big hill. So you have to move back in advance to help to prevent this nose diving. And if you think that you are sitting back, it's never enough if you are still nose diving. Because what is happening, people think that, oh, I'm 
we need to go all the way to the end of the cockpit and then move aft if it's necessary, just to avoid this bow plowing, how you say. Uh, the for, for the, for the uh, sales settings, we, we were discussing yeah. this um, in the first uh, uh, webinar when we were talking about the sales settings and I mentioned all the sales settings for all the um, different conditions. So you can always uh, come back to the first webinar and just have a look there. Um, any tips on turning from upwind to downwind in really strong winds? That's a good question because a lot of people are actually um, having troubles to bear away from upwind to downwind. And uh, main reason they are always thinking that we need power to bear away. When you are approaching the windward mark, you are already thinking how to go down as soon as possible. So you are coming with the speed and to complete the whole maneuver, you don't need to have extra power in the, in the sail. So once you are reaching the windward mark and your aim is to bear away, of course we need to ease the main sheet and of course we need to have the kicker off before the bearing away. So that's probably the two essentials to start going down. And one of uh, the biggest thing people are doing all the time, they reach the windward mark, they keep the main sheet in their hand and they try to bear away with full power. You can bear away with a flapping sail and turn to the downwind course and then catch the power uh, when you are already on the downwind course. So that's something uh, which is uh, coming with the practice, but remember that you don't have to have extra power in the sail to turn to the downwind. Most important is to depower the sail, is the main sheet, is the kicker first, is the main sheet, bear away and then catch the uh, main sheet and catch the power in the sail. Yes, so it's coming to the same question. Is it good to dump main sheet while rounding the wind? Yes, it's very good. And probably that's where people that develop this uh, habit is uh, probably from the optimist. I saw a lot of optimist kids. They just come to the windward mark, hold the main sheet in the full tension and pull the rudder down and, and fight with two forces. If you want to bear away, we don't need any main sheet power because the main sheet power is uh, pushing us upwind, not the downwind. And, and the, our goal is to bear away as fast as possible. Okay, moving to the weights. Probably uh, one of the most important part is to maintain the surfing. And this is what's coming where you uh, keep three things together constantly. Sail power, windward or leeward hill, and then the wave power. As soon as the wave power is fish finishing, how to switch back to the sail power. So that's becoming an, an experience with the time when you can link those three things in the loop nonstop. And that's where we have to practice a lot in the different conditions, but we always need to understand that how much power we have in our sail. So when we are surfing, you need to understand that the sail is not, is not a priority anymore. So when you're surfing down the hill, it's becoming a surfing, which almost the same as surfing with, uh, on the waves without any sail. So you have the energy of the water. So it's not the same as what we do on the, on the beach when we are surfing with the rollers, but it's, almost the same effect and that's where we have to understand once we get this wave power try to maximize this wave power for the longest period possible because the wave power is way stronger than the wind power in some conditions in some conditions is is not possible and by testing you can also understand okay today i try to catch three waves and it's not possible because I don't have enough speed in the boat. And that happens quite a lot with the lighter conditions, but the waves left from the previous day. So, and that's where people are. 
keep on uh, changing the course and losing, losing, losing. So that's probably uh, one of the conditions where you have to remind yourself. We don't have enough uh, speed in the boat, so you cannot catch the waves. First, you have to match the speed of the boat, and, and that's probably possible after 12 and up knots. Under 12 knots, and if you have a big swell, you will not be able to catch the waves and surf them down. So you have to have an idea in your head that not every condition is possible to catch the waves. So by testing, you can always think about, is it a day of being able to get the waves or it's not a day? If it's not a day, we only think about the sail power. This is my advice for you. And we are moving. Yeah, here is the last part is uh, when you're changing the course, don't forget to trim the sail especially when you are going from lee to positive. So we are talking about extreme negative course and then you're turning through the dead downwind into the uh, positive angle, almost broad reach. We always have to trim the sail and to keep the power in the sail through the whole turning. And that's where another uh, mistake is happening with a lot of uh, sailors. They do a lot of turns without trimming the sail in time and then we are coming back to the first stage where i said you always think about the maximum power in the sail so no matter what we do we always think about the maximum power of the sail and then we add everything else on the water and that's probably the last video for for today it's been a long talk but that's my favorite talk about the downwinds it's one of the hardest conditions here the sailor is sailing. And if you pay attention, uh, we have cross waves. Sorry, we have uh, offset waves and the cross wind. So we have the waves pushing you in one direction. The wind is pushing you in another di direction. And in that video, you will be able to notice looking at the bow that the boat is constantly in the surfing mode. And even with the changing the courses, it also maintains the speed. So there is no a transition of stopping the boat. There is always linking from wave power to the wind power because the, the wind and the wave was about even in that day. And um, the person was able to change the course and switch to the uh, sail power and without losing any speed. And you can see the bow is always light and easy to, to control. So that's uh, one of the hardest conditions to say. Here we are uh, combining all the uh, skills from balancing, from trimming of the sail and steering down with the waves. So this is one of the uh, most difficult ones and it's a quite a successful downwind. This person is also uh, pretty quick uh, these days in the downwind course, so that's a good example. And uh, I hope you can uh, get out of it anything. So as you can see, there are big hand movements. This is all uh, trimming. There is no extra uh, motion. It's all just trimming to keep the power in the sail while changing the course. And as soon you get the extra speed and your goal is to go that downwind, he is using the waves to maximize the speed from the waves. So that's going to be pretty much it from my side. And if you have uh, more questions, please, you're more than welcome to ask. And uh, you can unmute your mic and just uh, two, three questions just to keep uh, the things moving. Sorry. Yeah, hi, my name is Timo. I have a question. I just want to thank you for this great presentation. So thank you very much for your efforts. It was very no interesting uh, and very good. Thank you for uh, patience because we were uh, supposed to do uh, this last week and um, there were some technical issues, so this time we uh, succeeded.
from my end, it was I'm very good. I'm very happy to share uh, the mission because this is a very good period now to actually engage our brain and to think through the things and try to set up some sort of goals for the coming up summer because the summer is uh, uh, approaching us. I'm very positive about the fact that we are going to be soon on the water, but we will not have really cre clear goal of where is our the next regatta. So uh, it's always good to put some hours on uh, maximizing our boat speed. And that's why I choose these topics of thinking about the uh, boat speed first and then uh, moving to the racing stuff because I don't think there will be much racing happening this summer. So we have plenty of uh, time to fix the essentials. Thank you for uh, attending the webinar and I'm hoping to see you uh, next Thursday. So stay, uh, stay tuned and just look on the Instagram of um, Euro Ilka or Ilka sorry, or sorry. Sale Coach sorry. and you can find the uh, news about the next presentation and who is going to be our guest. Alex, uh, sorry, yeah. thank you for the presentation. Um, is there any possibility to get the PowerPoint uh, without the the chat the video chat yes so i'll do the, the so we will upload the, the presentation separately and um, uh, you can uh, get it uh, just uh, just drop an email uh, on info at salecoach.com and you will get the presentation uh, sent you by email okay, okay thank you very much thank you thank you alex Take thank care. you everyone Thank you, Alex. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex.